Hey there, fellow gearheads and auto enthusiasts. Your trusty mechanic is back, and today we're diving deep into a topic that's been causing quite a stir in the automotive world, the hidden problems with stop-start systems. Now I know what you're thinking. What's the big deal? It's just a fancy feature that saves fuel and helps the environment, right? Well, my friends, buckle up because we're about to take a wild ride through the good, the bad, and the ugly of this technology. Before we get started, let me set the stage. Stop-start systems are becoming increasingly common in modern cars, and for good reason. The idea is simple. When you come to a stop, your engine shuts off to conserve fuel and reduce emissions. It's like giving your car a little nap at every red light, and who doesn't love a good nap? But here's the thing, folks. As with most things in life, there's more to this story than meets the eye. You see, while these systems may seem like a brilliant solution on paper, the reality is a bit more complicated. And that's where your trusty mechanic comes in to shed some light on the hidden problems that car manufacturers don't want you to know about. So let's start with the biggest concern I see, wear and tear. Now, the automakers will tell you they've beefed up the starters and batteries to handle all this extra work. And sure, they have. But here's what they're not telling you. Oil pressure issues. Think about it for a second. Every time your engine starts up, there's a brief moment where oil pressure hasn't fully built up. In a normal car, this happens maybe once or twice a day, but with stop-start, we're talking dozens of times in a single commute. That adds up, especially on turbo engines where that hot oil is crucial for cooling. It's like putting your engine through a high-intensity workout without giving it a chance to stretch first. But wait, there's more. Battery and starter problems are also a real concern. Yes, these cars use special AGM batteries and heavy-duty starters, but here's the kicker. Those parts cost way more to replace. I'm talking two times more than regular parts, and trust me, they don't last three times longer. It's like paying for a fancy gym membership, but still ending up with sore muscles and a drained wallet. Now let's talk about the real-world issues that most drivers face. First up, engine restart delay. You're sitting at a light, it turns green, you hit the gas, and wait for it, wait for it. Finally, the engine starts up. It's like watching a sloth try to run a marathon. And let me tell you, it's not a pretty sight. This can be particularly frustrating in heavy traffic or when making quick turns, leaving you feeling like you're stuck in a never-ending game of start, stop, start, stop. But that's not all, folks. There's also the AC problem. Your AC compressor typically runs off the engine, so when the engine stops, so does your AC. Yeah, some newer cars have electric compressors, but most don't. So you're sitting there in summer traffic, getting baked like a potato in the oven, just to save a few cents on gas. It's like being offered a refreshing glass of lemonade, only to have it snatched away right before you take a sip. But let's talk about the savings, because, after all, that's why these systems exist, right? Most studies show about a 10% fuel savings in heavy city driving. Sounds good until you do the math. On a typical car getting 30 miles per gallon, driving 10,000 miles a year in the city, you're saving maybe $133 a year in gas at $4 per gallon. But here's the kicker. One replacement AGM battery can cost you more than a regular battery, so there goes a couple of years of fuel savings right there. It's like trying to save money by clipping coupons, only to blow your savings on a fancy new gadget you didn't really need. Now here's my take on the auto start-stop system, and I want you to listen closely, folks. Number one, if you're buying a new car with this system, check if it can be permanently disabled. Some can, some can't, and you don't want to be stuck with a feature you don't want or need. Number two, if you have a car with start-stop, be strategic. In stop-and-go traffic, maybe, a big maybe, leave it on. But for quick stops or hot weather, consider turning it off. It's like choosing your battles wisely. And in this case, the battle is against discomfort and potential wear and tear. Number three, and this is important, if you plan to keep your cars long-term, budget for those more expensive replacement parts and change your oil frequently. It's like investing in a good pair of running shoes. You might have to spend a little more up front, but it'll save you from potential injuries down the road. Bottom line, start-stop technology isn't all bad, but it's not the amazing fuel saver it's marketed to be. It's really just car manufacturers trying to meet emissions requirements in the cheapest way possible. And guess who ends up paying for it in the long run? Yep, you do, my friends. So what do you think? Have you had any experiences, good or bad, with stop-start systems? Share your stories in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insider mechanic knowledge that'll keep you ahead of the game. And remember, a little bit of knowledge can go a long way in keeping your ride running smoothly and saving you money in the long run. Stay tuned for more tips and tricks and keep those engines purring, my friends.
Because at the end of the day, your car is like a loyal companion and it deserves to be treated with the care and respect it deserves.